Yes, thanks. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about what we want to do with precise modeling this uh, agonist antagonist muscle pair. Uh, first, I want to give uh, some motivation to the project. Uh, so, okay, first of all, what's an agonist antagonist muscle pair? Uh, this is a pair of two muscles. Uh, the classical example is the biceps and the triceps, as you see in the picture. And these are skeletal muscles, meaning that they are responsible for the voluntarily movement of our body, and they can only contract in one direction. So in order to be able to do movements, you need them to work in pairs. So as you can see, uh, the two muscles are coupled mechanically by a series of tendons and uh, bones. Uh, this is what I have uh, written here in this uh, mechanical coupling. But there is also some neural coupling between the two muscles that I'm going to explain later on. Um, actually, uh, in this project where I am part, we are considering a very specific case, which is what happens after an AMI amputation. So that's like, uh, this is a novel amputation technique. It has been only been uh, carried out for a few years. And the idea of this amputation technique is to basically improve the life quality of the patients with amputations. Um, one of the th issues that it's addressing is that it is uh, restoring proprioception. That's uh, the ability to sense where our limbs are without having to look at them. And there are other issues that it's addressing, uh, but since I'm not a biologist, I don't really want to go deeper into that. <laughs> um, but the idea of the new technique is that basically you have like this natural coupling uh, between the two muscles, uh, but when you do the amputation, you are getting rid of this natural coupling. And the idea is to replace this uh, by putting a tendon, uh, putting together the remainings of the muscles so that there is uh, some mechanical coupling between them, which is not the original one, but at least it's some type of mechanical coupling. So basically this, just as teaser, I would have like at least these three participants that I will uh, run using precise. Um, but before getting into the details of the coupling scheme that I will have, I think uh, it's good that I mention a bit um, the muscle models uh, that uh, we are considering, so that later I can explain why we are doing what we are doing, uh, or what we want to do, what we want to do uh, with the coupling scheme. So, uh, first of all, uh, we are using an in-house solver, it's OpenDU, uh, that's developed at the University of Stuttgart, and this is a muscle solver that uh, is open source, written in C++, and has been uh, created having on mind uh, the usage of high performance systems. So it's highly scalable. Now, the model uh, of the skeletal muscles that we take into consideration um, is based on three layers. So basically, muscles are very hierarchical tissues. And as you can see in the picture, which you might remember from Ishan's presentation, uh, the three layers that I take into account is the top layer, where I compute the deformation of the muscle, and then there is also the muscle fibers, and then there are the sarcomeres. The sarcomeres, uh, in here, I just represent them as points, so it's a zero D mesh, and um, they are the smallest contracting unit of a muscle. So, what happens is that we have these three levels with different physics on all of these levels. Uh, we have different meshes for them. The upper level is a 3D mesh, the fibers are in 1D mesh, uh, the sarcomeres are, as I said, 0D mesh. Uh, the phenomena happening at these uh, levels uh, are taking place in different scales. What happens in the sarcomere is like microseconds. What happens in the muscle is more like seconds. Uh, so there's like a lot of subcycling involved between uh, the three levels. Uh, I think it's nice to just go very briefly uh, on each of them. I would like to start with the uh, muscle fibers. So the muscle fibers are activated uh, by some um, neural signal, let's say. It's just an electrical signal that then propagates to the ends of the muscle fibers. So we have for each muscle fiber, we have to solve a diffusion problem. And then there is uh, here this reactant term, uh, which comes from the sarcomeres. So the sarcomeres, are, as I said, are um, the unit that can contract. And basically, we have uh, a system of ODEs. Uh, in my case, I 
the model that makes more sense to use uh, in most cases is the shorter model. So for each point, I have uh, these 57 unknowns that I need to solve. And with this, we calculate the state of the sarcomere, and it tells us if it is contracting or not. And then we basically add up all of the contractions so that we have the activation forces for the overall muscle model, uh, which the muscle is basically just an imperialistic uh, material uh, that has these active forces. So, how does this look in OpenDU? So basically, uh, OpenDU has like this uh, modular structure uh, where it's sending the information between the three different levels. Uh, the sending of information has nothing to do with precise. No confusion with this, please. Um, and on top of that, uh, I, we are also adding uh, another model to um, account for the neural stimulation. Uh, I mean, of course, you could just put a, an input file and have this as neural stimulation, but we are trying to um, have a better representation of the motor neurons. Uh, so basically, uh, the fiber, the muscle is made of these fibers, and uh, these fibers are innervated by a motor neuron. Each motor neuron innervates multiple fibers of the same muscle, and they are the ones that send this electrical signal to the uh, center of the fiber that then propagates. This signal that the motor neurons are, sended, are sending is actually modulated by the information received from the sensory organs. Um, so there are two main sensory organs in muscles. Uh, one is the muscle spindle, which is located along the muscle fibers, and then there are the tendo, uh, Golgi tendon organs, which are located at the tendons. Um, so the thing uh, is that because uh, we are interested in this AMI amputation, and in an amputation, you basically uh, remove these tendons that attach to the bone. We do not consider the Golgi tendon organs. We are focusing on the muscle spindles. So uh, <laughs> this in uh, OpenDU, again, looks like an extra model. So basically, we would have here uh, the sensory organ model, which is again 0D. Uh, basically, uh, it takes a stretch, so how long, uh, how how was the deformation uh, in the muscle, and sends this information in, front of, uh, in the form of an electrical signal to uh, the motor neuron. So that's how my muscle model looks like. It's made of these uh, five different components. But actually, there is something I didn't uh, explain completely, which is that the muscle spindles of one muscle, say muscle one, this one located here, uh, well, they take this uh, sensory information and they send it to the motor neurons that activate this muscle. But in fact, they are also sending this sensory information with some delay to the motor neurons that activate the antagonist muscle. And this is how the two muscles are actually being coupled narrowly, not only mechanically. So, with this, we can talk uh, about how does our uh, coupling scenario looks like and where are we using precise exactly. So, first of all, uh, we have to, to start by coupling uh, muscle and a tendon mechanically. Um, so, basically, uh, the arrow in black would be where we are using precise. Everything that is in gray would be inside the open view solver. Um, so as you can see here, we are trying to couple two open D solvers. Uh, the muscle solver is way more complex than the tendon solver. The tendon solver is basically just taking the continuum mechanics uh, implementation of the muscle solver, uh, but without any active forces. And this is something that has been done. As you see here, uh, this is a simulation where a muscle uh, was coupled to two tendons on the top and one tendon on the bottom. And all of the solvers were uh, using OpenDU and uh, surface coupling using precise was done at the um, boundaries. The problem is that this was done uh, using explicit coupling. Uh, using explicit coupling is not sufficient for the things I want to do. Uh, this is something I'm currently debugging. So here it's a simple example uh, to show limitations of explicit coupling. So basically, I just have a 
I mean, it's a dummy scenario, right? Like I have this tendon and I pull it from one side and then I take the same tendon, I split it into two, I set up a precise communication between the two tendons and I just apply the same uh, boundary conditions. So I want to see how the one participant case behaves the same as the two participant case. And if I see that if I use explicit coupling, well, the two case scenario does not uh, get pulled as much um, because um, there is no convergence if you then make it implicit. So basically, um, you are losing traction due to the fact that the two um, participants are dynamic solvers. Anyway, let's assume that this works uh, in implicit coupling. We will not only have that, we would actually have two masses, meaning that we would have that. So that would be a case with three participants, and I would use uh, precise at this interface and precise at this interface. I would be sending values of the uh, geometrical, so velocity and displacement, and on the other hand, I will be getting traction. As I said, sorry, this is not complete because there is no neural coupling into it. If we want to add the neural coupling, then we have to account for the fact that the sensory organs of the agonist muscle send information to the motor neurons of the antagonist muscle, and the same thing happens here. Precise only doesn't know the details of the solvers, so from precise point of view, oh, sorry, huh, that was not here, one second. Uh, Let's, let's talk about this first. <laughs> um, so, um, okay, I'm here. Um, so actually, uh, here I have these three participants, uh, but uh, we plan to split the muscle solver into two. And there are two reasons to do that. The first one is uh, due to a limitation of OpenDU, it will be to make a more efficient use of the computer resources uh, because um, OpenDU is written in a way that this um, component here and this component here need to use the same number of processes. Uh, but actually, the resolution that we need uh, for the muscle fibers, as you can get the idea from this picture, is way more higher than the, mus the resolution that you need for the 3D mesh. Uh, so that's where uh, usually it makes sense to uh, use volume coupling using precise. So before we were talking about surface coupling, when we were talking about the muscle tendon interface, this will be uh, muscle coupling, uh, volume coupling between the fibers and the 3D mesh, uh, which was what was in David's example. Uh, but if then we want to take into account, uh, if we then split uh, the muscle solver, we would still have the sensory organs here, so we would have to implement a new uh, um, precise um, sending of data, which has not been done yet, which will be that the sensory organs are sending the stretch to the simulation. The other reason why we want to split the muscle solver in these two solvers would be to use an existing well-tested solver. Uh, so, um, OpenDU has this um, FEM um, mechanics solver, but there are many other fan mechanics solvers that would make sense to use. Uh, one would be FABIO, since this is what people from the muscle field usually use, uh, but also there are other fan solvers that could be considered here. And now, yes, this would lead us to a case with uh, five participants. Uh, this would be the two corresponding to the first of the muscle, the two corresponding to the second of the muscle, and then we have the tendon here. And from the precise point of view, that's what I wanted to say before, um, they are only looking at this because precise doesn't know the details inside the solvers. So that's basically what precise is seeing. If we were to use uh, a combination of FABIO and OpenDU, then we would probably do that, right? Uh, we would have the OpenDU taking care of the neural stimulation and the muscle fiber uh, solver, so the diffusion and the reaction term, and then we would have uh, FABIO to do everything that is related to uh, mechanics. I want to go into a bit more detail of the my <laughs> coupling scheme, because I have five participants, which is not so common. Uh, so, okay, first of all, uh, we have here, 
what you see in red that could be written in the precise config file as a multi-coupling um, case. So we would have uh, this muscle sending displacement and velocity, the tendon sending back transition, and here we would have the opposite. This is surface coupling. It would be an exchange of 3D data. But then we have to look as well to the unique coupling, uh, where we can use a serial explicit scheme, and then we will be sending 0D data. It's only this stretch, so this deformation of the muscle that we are sen uh, sending. And then, this is more complicated, we have this big coupling, which takes place between what used to be the former muscle solver, that is now split into two, and here, on the one hand, we have this geometry that the mechanics send to the fibers and this uh, activation forces that the fibers send to the mechanics, which would be 3D data. But then, uh, since we have this information about the sensory organs, this would be some zero data that would have to be um, sent there. So that's something that we still need to look exactly how we'll precise do that. Um, I also thought that it might be nice to look at this uh, from a timeline perspective. Uh, so basically, in each of the time step, we would be calling this multi-coupling case. Uh, it's an implicit scheme, so we would have a different number of iterations to be done in each of the time steps. After that, we would call uh, the unicoupling, uh, where we are sending the stretch to uh, the antagonist muscle, and then we would have uh, oops. And then we would have the bicoupling, uh, where we are uh, sending on the one hand the stretch, but also doing this volume coupling. And with this, I go to the end. So there are many things that are still unclear. Uh, an option would be to, at some point, time to take time, try to integrate the uh, macro micro manager uh, for the volume coupling. This is all uh, things that have to be seen uh, yet. Uh, but basically, uh, well, next steps, first of all, <laughs> these things that I have presented uh, need to actually get to work. So yeah, that's the first thing. And then um, the geometries that I'm currently working on, uh, they are just cubic geometries. So they are very far away from the real muscle geometry. Uh, so that would be something um, to look into. And then uh, we are in contact with um, surgeons who do these AME amputations, and we have spoken with them the things that could be interesting for them to know, and what we think that is actually doable, and things that we could uh, try to do parametric studies about them would be, for example, the length of the tendon, what is a suitable length for the tendon that is connecting the two muscles. Uh, we can also study the effect of muscle atrophy, which sounds very far-fetched, but it just has to do with the densities that you put in the model of the muscle. And then um, there is, of course, uh, the question whether if we can help them know about the initial stretch, so how much do they pull the muscles uh, after the surgery. And that's everything. If you have questions. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks a lot for the nice talk. Uh, I guess we have a few minutes for questions. So if you have a question. Yeah, Philip. Oh. Oh, okay. You you mean like the overall dimensions? Because uh, if you want to have like a realistic muscle, uh, a muscle fibers has like fifty thousand sarcomeres, and a muscle has like millions of fibers. Uh, but that's not the scales I'm managing right now. Uh, but uh, um, the person who developed OpenDU did manage to have quite big scales, so uh, I think he had several thousands of muscle fibers at least. So maybe not 10 millions, but still quite big. And they were doing that using the 57 uh, unknowns for each of the circumeres. 
Do we have further questions? Yes. I think here it's not so relevant to have timescales because from what I understood, uh, the muscle, the, the stimula neural stimulation and the mechanics are not so uh, far away in terms of timescale. What is far away is the uh, sarcomeres from the muscle fibers, but this is something that happens inside this participant, right? So this will not be handled by uh, precise. More questions? Okay, not for now. Then, uh, thanks again.